This is Honolulu, crossroads of the Pacific, mecca of countless tourists for more than half a century. Waikiki Beach and the familiar landmark of Diamond Head jutting into a calm blue sea. The holiday atmosphere of crowded silver sands. Outrigger canoes and surfboards gliding over lazy waves. Mainlanders, young and old, lounging beneath the cocoa palms along the shore. Gardens, romantic with the perfume of exotic flowers. Sleek limousines, gliding out of fashionable hotel porticos along Waikiki's Kalakaua Avenue. All this is the Hawaii of the tourist, the Hawaii of song and legend. But there is another Hawaii, another Honolulu, an American city where the people of many races live and work together. Let us look briefly into the daily lives of a few of these Americans who live in this mid-ocean capital of our 50th state. Mike Cohen, a shoe store manager. His wife, Ingi. Andy Holo, a mail carrier. And Francis Fernandez, a school teacher. These people live on the island of Oahu, upon which Honolulu was founded in the early years of the last century. Oahu is the second largest island of the Hawaiian group. Its coastline is rugged, with steep cliffs separating the fertile valleys, a mountainous land formed by erupting volcanoes in ages past. The mild climate and rich volcanic soil are ideal conditions for the growing of sugarcane, which is Hawaii's principal crop. The second important crop is pineapple. Modern machinery speeds the harvest in vast fields from which the pineapples are hauled to canneries in Honolulu for packing and shipment overseas. Pearl Harbor has long been an important naval base. Hickam Field is a major link in the chain of America's air defenses that span the broad Pacific. The United States Armed Forces contribute a great deal to the prosperity of Hawaii. Since the days when Yankee whalers put in for water and provisions, Honolulu Harbor has been a busy crossroads on the long route from America to the Orient, and ships from many lands tie up at the foot of the city's downtown streets. The warm waters surrounding the Hawaiian Islands abound in seafood of many kinds, and fishing boats are a familiar sight. The statue of Kamehameha the Great, which stands on Honolulu's King Street, suggests Hawaii's colorful history. This able ruler unified the warring tribes of the islands under a dynasty which lasted until a republic was established in 1894. Hawaii was formally annexed to the United States on August 12, 1898. Across the way stands the Yolani Palace, the only building of its kind in the United States. Once the home of Hawaiian royalty, it's now the state capital. In sharp contrast to these monuments of the past are the airy buildings of modern Honolulu. This hotel combines functional design with a striking Polynesian motif in its decoration. The pride of the city is the new Ala Moana shopping center, said to be the largest in the world. It has two levels for shopping and parking. A design in mosaic tile decorates the huge east wall of the center, which is more than two city blocks long. Art and architecture are blended in this fountain, which stands at one end of the upper level. A pool with cascading water, waving bamboos in oriental sculpture, 
decorates one of the broad passageways between the many shops. The lower level is surrounded by a huge deck which permits parking inside as well as on the paved court outside the building. Here Mike Cohen parks his car each morning after driving from his home in the suburbs. Escalators carry shoppers from the lower to the upper level so that all parts of the center can be reached without going outside. Mike, a retired army officer, came to Honolulu with his family to manage a shoe store in the new shopping center. His store, which faces the interior court on the upper level, is the Honolulu branch of a large chain of shoe stores. It is considered one of the most beautiful shops of its kind in the United States. Mike's customers are the citizens of Hawaii. Japanese, Filipinos, Hawaiians, Chinese, and Hauli, as the white race is known on the islands, united under the American flag in a spirit of equality and goodwill. Mike's wife, Inge, was born in Germany. She is now an American citizen, and their daughter, Diana, was born in California. Wearing a mumu, a loose flowing gown popular in the islands, Inge goes about her household duties in their new home near Diamond Head. Inge often takes the bus downtown to shop. Except for the cosmopolitan crowds, the business streets of Honolulu are like those of any American city. The central post office is located near the Yolani Palace, just a few blocks from the main business section. Mrs. Cohen stops to buy stamps and to mail a letter to her mother, who lives in Germany. The people of Honolulu usually spend their Sundays at the beach or at home in their own gardens. Mike and Inge relax beside their swimming pool while Diana paddles in the sun-warmed water. In this pleasant climate, most modern homes are designed with outdoor living space and meals are often served in the patio or lanai. The Coens are typical of the thousands of Americans from the mainland who found a place in the growing economy of these mid-Pacific islands. At seven o'clock each morning, Andy Holu, a native Hawaiian, is at the post office loading his truck for the day's deliveries. Andy sorts the mail before loading. The letters are filed in long metal boxes according to house numbers to save time. Andy's route is in a suburban district called Aina Haina, and his first calls are in the local shopping center. As in most American cities, the growth of Honolulu tends toward suburban development. Aina Haina is typical of these communities, which are self-sufficient in their modern shopping facilities. A section of the residential area on Andy's route is called Wailupi Circle, a district of quiet streets lined with modern one-story homes. Here, spacious gardens are filled with the exotic flowers of the islands. Real estate values have soared in recent years, and a home in Wailupi Circle costs as much or more than a similar house in California or Florida. Andy has been on this route for many years, and to housewives along the streets of Wailupi Circle, he is an old friend, as well as the mail carrier. Andy's wife, Lee, is Chinese, and their daughter, Carolyn, is a student at Honolulu's University High School. Mrs. Holu is proud of her hibiscus plants, which include many rare varieties. Wayne, their son, is a senior at University High School. After he graduates, he hopes to go to the mainland for further study in preparation for a career as a public relations consultant. The old section of downtown Honolulu has a flavor of the Orient, for there were a great number of immigrants from the Far East until Hawaii became a territory of the United States. This produce market supplies Honolulu with fresh fruit and vegetables, much of which is imported from the mainland. Mrs. Li Holu is an expert in the preparation of Chinese food and she often comes to the old quarter to shop for Chinese delicacies. 
Some shops specialize in shark's fins, preserved eggs, lychee nuts, and other rare items used in Chinese cooking. Lee is selecting some bitter squash to be cooked along with the other vegetables for a picnic lunch. The climate of Hawaii is ideal for a picnic at any time of the year. Mr. and Mrs. Holu have arranged an outdoor birthday celebration honoring one of their son's classmates. Even a picnic lunch represents many racial backgrounds. Southern fried chicken is just as popular as sukiyaki and chow mein. Andy and Lee Holu are of Hawaiian and Chinese ancestry, and the young people at their picnic are typical of the new generation of Hawaiian Americans who are growing up together without thought of race or creed. Frances Fernandez lives with her family on a hilltop overlooking Honolulu. She's a teacher at an elementary school at Kailua, a small community on the windward or eastern coast of Oahu. She drives to school in her own car. The island's highway system is excellent, and the new Uanupali Drive leading up into the hills beyond Honolulu is one of great beauty. This spectacular road passes a historic landmark. It was here at the edge of the towering precipice called the Pali that Kamehameha the Great drove his enemies over the cliff and completed his conquest of the islands. The new road that winds down the steep face of the Pali is a masterpiece of engineering, taking the motorist from the cloud-wrapped summit to the warm, fertile plains of the eastern coast. Beyond the Pali, the road to Kailua passes through areas of rich red volcanic earth, ideal for growing sugar, bananas, papayas, and other tropical fruits. As in many communities elsewhere, the population of Kailua has increased faster than educational facilities can be provided. The school is a cluster of frame buildings and Quonset huts acquired from the armed forces after the Second World War. Frances teaches the third grade at Kailua. Her class includes children of the many racial blends that live and work together in Hawaii. The Fernandez family has an unusual hobby, making Christmas trees. They fasten the dried bloom of the areca palm to the sheath of a coconut blossom, spray it with gold or silver paint, hang colored glass balls on the branches, and the result is a Christmas tree, Hawaiian style. One of Waikiki's most popular tourist attractions is the International Marketplace, a center of small shops designed in the Polynesian motif. Here, curios from many of the Pacific Islands are sold to visitors. Francis is shopping for a gift to send to friends on the mainland. At a little stall called the Thieves' Market, she inspects a model outrigger canoe from Fiji. 